And we return to our top story tonight. Services on the east-west line were disrupted in the western part of Singapore between Boon Lay and Queenstown MRT stations since morning. Train services will continue to be suspended between Jurong East and Buena Vista on Thursday. I'm now joined by Associate Professor Raymond Ong, Deputy Head of Research and Enterprise at the NUS Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Prof Ong, thank you very much for being here with us. So this is not the first major MRT. MRT breakdown Singapore has experienced. It is the third service disruption in a month. How is this looking for Singapore's rail reliability? I think that uh, prior to these three incidents, uh, we are actually achieving a record high mean uh, kilometre travel before failure. And mm -hmm. then we see these three incidents. And, and of course, it's a, a challenge for the rail industry in Singapore because it really... Uh, dampens the morale because we've been doing so much on maintenance standards, getting our rail engineers chartered and trained in this aspect. So I, I have to say that we are, we are learning a lot from this experience that we've seen in the past two weeks. Earlier, you were just telling me that this is quite an emotional experience. Uh, what have SMRT and LTA learned from previous incidents to inform today's responses? I think that uh, based on the past experience, uh, LTA and SMRT and other public transport operators have realised that communication is the key mm. and, and we need to actually quickly communicate the disruptions and the reasons to the public so that uh, we actually can uh, show them that there's a confidence that we are doing the right things to move forward. And how do you think we're doing in that area, in the communication area? I think uh, since the disruption started this morning, we have already seen that uh, there are information that's put out promptly and I think there is a re press release that was actually made by SMRT and LTA. And just now I can see that Minister actually posted on Facebook. Mm. And, and basically on these events that uh, what actually caused this incident, some snippets of it, and, and what is being done and what actions have been carried out. How significantly do you think today's breakdown uh, will impact other train lines? I think uh, there's a, a, the impact to other train lines will come in a few, uh, I would say, few aspects. Mm -hmm. The first, uh, basically, is that there will be a redirecting or uh, a re reassignment of basically passengers mm. who, who can actually travel, for example, uh, from Boon Lay to perhaps uh, CBD uh, or from other, other points that actually can bypass the affected routes. Of course, for those who do not pass by the affected routes, uh, they there's no impact to them at all mm. that should be happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and most of the affected stations today between uh, Boon Lay and Queenstown stations, they don't have alternative train lines. Uh, how prepared is Singapore when it comes to diversifying our rail infrastructure and ensuring its resilience? I think from this incident, we actually can see that uh, there is a, a, a a, a challenge for us right now, especially when there is a line when there, we, when, when there is no alternative lines. Mm. And we can see that LTA is actually uh, ramping up its construction with the Cross Island line and also the Jurong Regional line okay. in this aspect to help divert the load. But this also underlies another important aspect, which is bus transport. Because at this point in time, we see that actually when we have such a, a problem whereby there's no alternative bus line, uh, mm. MRT lines, uh, the bus, public bus service will be at the forefront in carrying the load of the passengers to go from their, destin uh, their home to wherever they want to go. Which is what we've been seeing today, right? Um, in the first place, uh, Prof Ong, what makes a rail network or system resilient? In terms of resilience, I would have to say that there's two aspects to look at. One is the infrastructure aspect and the other is operational aspect. From the infrastructure aspect, we would expect that there, there is an active maintenance program and an active uh, uh, regime of maintenance to mm -hmm. ensure that the rolling stock and the permanent, permanent railways uh, infrastructures are in tip-top working condition uh, to provide the reliable infrastructure and service. On the, on the operational aspect, we would like to see alternative diversification, bus, rail integration, alternate rail lines that actually support the network in, in making sure that people can go from wherever they want to go. 
Okay, and you know, we were saying, so this is the third time in two weeks uh, that Singapore's train lines have broken down. What do you think will authorities and the train operators uh, be looking to improve as they proceed with, you know, rigorous investigations? I think this is a, a time whereby uh, I believe the authority and the operators will be really sitting down and looking at what caused these incidents. Uh, is it an isolated incident or is there something that is systemic, not in terms of just the uh, uh, infrastructure, but also on the organisation and the culture? And I think this would be something that uh, we will explore and learn in this aspect from this. You know, Prof Ong, just to go back in time a little bit, the longest train service disruption to date was in October 2017. If you recall, um, services on the North-South Line were shut down for over... 20 hours. How likely will the current disruption go beyond that duration? I, th I think this will depend on the extent of the damage, which uh, I think we have not known until now. And I believe that uh, there will be a immense pressure on the operators to make sure that when we open this uh, uh, the track for service, there will not be another failure. Yeah. <laughs> so this has to be uh, a quality assurance to the, to the public. Yeah. All right, let's hope so. Prof Ong, thank you very much uh, for you. coming in and to share your perspectives with us. That was Associate Professor Raymond Ong, Deputy Head of Research and Enterprise at the NUS Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering.